On this week's Mobile Saltwater Fishing, we're going back to the Bahamas, Blue Marlin Cove more specifically. We're gonna take a 91, 92 mile run from North Miami Beaches, all over Inlet, to West End in the Bahamas, hopefully to cash in on some fast fishing action. George Pulveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. It was dark and early when we boarded the Mark 6 at TNT Marine in North Miami. And the anticipation runs really high on any fishing trip. And for me, when you have a long crossing ahead of you to fish the Bahamas, it really ramps up. So here we were, my friend Carl Grassi, production team, loading up the Mark 6 with all the rods, the coolers, everything else that goes with such a trip, checking the electronics, making sure all the routes are there, and really just making sure we have everything ready for a successful trip. So a typical uh, Bahamas trip. You know, when you go with George, you're getting up crack of dawn, but really that's four o'clock in the morning. We load the boat up and uh, it's looking beautiful. We're at the marina now, so everything looks fantastic. So we're looking forward to a really good crossing and we're gonna head out as soon as it's first light. Never come to the Bahamas with one game plan in mind. You have to have several game plans and that means a wide variety of tackle. Offshore trolling was gonna be a big part. I rigged a lot of trolling baits. They would be fished on Penn 50 Internationals, rigged probably about three dozen of those baits to make sure that they were in prime condition for a trip. Then another big goal was to go in Northwest Providence Channel and chunk our live bait, the yellow fins. Then of course, it's hard to go to the Bahamas without doing some kind of bottom fishing. So yes, indeed, we had all the weights, the rigs and baits to cover any aspect of bottom fishing. It was blowing 15 to 20 knots as we cleared Hollow over inlet and we just had to settle in pick our groove. So we finally arrived, we checked into our rooms, cleared customs and all that good stuff. So we said, you know what, maybe it's a good time to go outside, take a peek. So we picked up, put the rods on the boat and went out the channel and started looking around. And sure enough, we weren't even five miles offshore. We found a nice flock of birds flying around on the radar, pulled up to them and we started setting up some baits on them. Sure enough, George just hooked up on a fish. Is that a black fin? I got a black fin. That's a black fin. I got a gaff too, you know. That's yeah. so the ball, black fin, black fin. <laughs> so the black fin's mixed in here. I'll slide down. I'll get, I'll get you a nice shot, Carl. Where's he hooked? I don't know yet. Oh, it's right in the mouth. I don't think it makes a difference. <laughs> Whoa. Nice one, George. Look at that. Perfect hook. And it seemed like a little nicer fish. Sure enough, it was a blackfin tuna. So that's a good, you know, a good setup for the first hour of being in the Bahamas. We're already into the tuna, so we're thinking, hey, this is great. We took a nice long circle in the Northwest Providence Channel looking for birds. Didn't see any that particular afternoon. So we decided, you know what? Let's get back to Blue Marlin Cove. So back to Blue Marlin Cove it was. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. Expectations are high for day two. Northwest Providence Channel is our next stop. We're hoping to get on the board. We're fishing at a Blue Marlin Cove Resort and Marina on West End, Grand Bahama Island. Next morning, load up the Mark 6 early and said, let's take a run out to Northwest Providence Channel. As we started to get into the channel itself, we paid particular attention to the Simrad radar in bird mode. We are about 40, 41 miles away from Blue Marlin Cove. We saw some birds early on. Here it goes, it's gonna happen. 
we shut down, we took some of our live bait here and set it out. And the first fish that we catch is a mahi. Yeah, you got it, you ate my bait, you got my bait. <clears throat> here he goes. I got him. And Do you have any friends? Uh, no friends, but I could use one on the gaff. Oh. <laughs> here he goes. <laughs> you got it. I'm gonna say he's a little green still. Yeah, the way green. Looks like he's hooked okay. You want me to keep him in or just get him? I would say get him. I don't see any right. friends with him. He's freaking his head out a little bit would be great, but no, I'll make it happen. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you were right. He was a little green still. I, I was letting it out and the goggle eye took off and I was waiting for it to get to the bimini to hang the, the sinker on to send it down. You started screaming, there's a dolphin, dolphin. And, and I'm going for a spinner. The pitch bait goes, I think he's on yours. I'm starting to wind mine up and I see that green come in there and eat it. And Yeah, nice dolphin. He got the skunk out of the boat. There's a mahi in there. So we're bouncing around. We're marking birds on the Simrad in the bird mode. Some of the schools that you could see were very small fish, but nonetheless, we sat there and we baited because it could be bigger fish in there and we worked each one thoroughly with not a lot of luck. Waiting on the bite. We finally got to a spot where we marked a lot of birds and we saw some of the tuna skyrocketing out of the water. These were the yellow fins, the nice size tuna that we wanted. 30, 40, 50, 60 pounders in there, the big ones. So here we go in this one big school, we set out got the baits, goggle eyes on top, couple goggle eyes down deep, and sure enough, it starts up. Bam, Carl's hooked up. Yeah. No, he got He's got a yellow. He was lazy, though. <laughs> He's probably in a nice cool water thermal climb. <laughs> How much pressure can I put on when he's taking drag? Yeah. Oh, shark. There you go. I guess a little more than that, huh? We're not talking about regular sharks. These are 10 to 12 foot long sharks. When they come up, the whole water color changes. You think there's a whale down there. And all of a sudden you see him come across, you see this beautiful silver yellow fin tuna, and he just eats the entire thing, it's gone. Boom, rod pops and it's over. We lost five, maybe six yellow fins the sharks at that spot. Carl's rod goes off and he's on this fish. He's stroking the heck out of it. It's coming in fairly rapidly. So we're thinking, okay, it's a small yellow fin. So as I look down there, it was a big black fin tuna. You know, excellent job. I see a weight coming up. Hang yeah. on, buddy. Swing, swing, swing to me. Oh, you're doing good. Coming around. All right, we got him. You can work him around there. Coming around. Here he comes. Okay. All right, so another. You're doing good. Woo! I saw that black fin. Wow. Perfect hook set. And there's a shark. Do you see that shark falling? I know. I got super scared because I put the heat on him. I was past full almost, or up into full, I should say. And we've been getting sharked all day. I know. And now we finally get one, so that's kind of cool. And at that split second, I thought for sure he was going to get eaten. But it, what it was is he was running away from a huge shark that was chasing him. So he felt that if he got under the boat, it would deter the shark from eating him. That's the only reason we caught that fish. With Carl's big blackfin in the boat, winds increasing, and the late afternoon sun sliding closer to the horizon, we decided to head back to the barn. Luckily, two dolphin delayed our arrival and set us up for a spectacular sunset. Another very pleasant surprise back at the dock, and we had our friends, Clay and Stephanie Cowart with Life by the Bow, which they're YouTube sensations. They had an incredible show on YouTube that we had basically buddied up for this trip. But their luck was a little bit different. 
they actually got a yellowfin in a boat that was around 60 some odd pounds. But we would definitely pair up with them in the evenings and have some fun and uh, we're gonna top it off with one incredible fish fry in one of our suites. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix always use the best line. Starbright Boat Care Products, blending technology with performance since 1973. George, we'll be right back. Faced with a hard east wind the following morning, it was time to switch tactics. We're fishing out of the Blue Marlin Cove Resort and Marina on West End, Grand Bahama Island. And who better to tell you about Blue Marlin Cove than owner Joe Rieger. We uh, purchased Blue Marlin in 2012, became the sole owners in 2016 here at the property, uh, and uh, have been running a, a, re a residency resort here. Uh, we're a sportsman's family, eco-friendly resort. Um, and we want to continue that for generations to come. And most people aren't realizing West End, you have just such a, an incredible rich uh, area of bottom fishing, uh, deep dropping. Tuna are pretty localized, so they do stay pretty year round. With excellent dockage, including fuel, pool, tiki bar, luxurious accommodations, and a fantastic restaurant, Blue Marlin Cove has it all. You know, look, Blue Marlin Cove is definitely a wonderful family-friendly resort and facility, residency resort, and we welcome you to come and see us here. We're always thrilled to see George and all of his crew and, and uh, all the families come in and really enjoy themselves and have a great time. So we welcome you here and we hope to see you soon. Now, let's get back to the fishing. Day three was our trolling day. We had run out some good bottom, some decent drop-offs, and we put out a spread of trolling baits on 50 internationals. Got a nice looking spread going, and to get the baits all out and lined up, we put the autopilot on and just started dragging our way down sea and got everything looking really good. Here comes a billfish on the port side outrigger and nails it. Big yeah. buck, always your big buck. Yeah. Bring it up and maybe take it back in the spread, maybe. Bring it up real slowly. Bring it creeping in the spread, see if we can get them up tight. But it didn't happen. So there was a shot at a billfish, knocked it off the outriggers, never did pick it up, couldn't get a hook. So there was a strike one with billfish. Now what happened next remains to this date one of the most bizarre things that I've ever witnessed. So as we're trolling, I brought a bent butt 50 international, spooled up with 50 pound test suffix 832 braid. And I brought this to send a deep diving swimming plug down the center of her bait spread. Now, Rapalup had just introduced a new high speed x wrap Magnum Extreme swimming plug that could track around eight feet deep and stay in the water at speeds 15, 16 knots. That bent butt 50 starts smoking. And we're thinking, oh, here's our wahoo. Yeah. I'm gonna get these lines out of the way. Clear this. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh, it kept, it come off? No, he's still on there. I'm just clearing this one out of the way. What happened? Look. It, w this fish got hit. Let's see what it is. It's a cuda. It's a big cuda. What happened? I don't know. Then you had a billfish on. Uh, I'm wondering what happened here. That thing was jumping. Now, I know that a big barracuda can't pull that much drag. So George swears it was a billfish that got off after he hit that lure, and then a barracuda picked it up as I was reeling it in. It's starting to get pretty rough, because remember I did say it was 15 to 20 knots, and now it's probably blowing 20 to 25 knots. And uh, we got a pretty good size sea, so we start turning around, heading back to the marina. So we get back in, and as we got off the Mark 6, we decided let's go ahead and um, grill some burgers and hot dogs. And sometimes after a long day of fishing, when you come off that boat, the boat's all washed down, you're feeling just a little bit beat. You're not really in the mood to go up and take a shower and go back downstairs in the restaurant. Sometimes you gather the production team and your buddies and you have a grill 
throw some burgers, hot dogs, and you just sit around and you relax and you talk about what happened or relive what happened during the course of that day. So it's kind of cool. You just go out there, you set your grill up. They have a nice little area. Um, you know, it was kind of like, almost like camping. I hate to say, to say it like that, but it was really cool. And uh, we had hamburgers, hot dogs, and a couple beers and some Papa Pilar. And next thing you know, the night was uh, just moving right along and uh, it was great. George, we'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. VMC, your expert in hooks. Art by Pasta, real life art. Visit artbypasta.com. Blackfin tuna in the Bahamas are typically shallower than yellowfins, roughly between 600 and 1,000 feet, though they sometimes mix. During early mornings and late afternoons, they'll occasionally ambush bait just off and even on the reefs. Live bait is best, but blackfins aggressively strike small trolling lures and swimming plugs. Best tip, drift a live bait between 50 and 150 feet deep around working birds with 30-pound fluorocarbon leader and a 2-aught to 4-aught circle hook. In artbypasta.com from catch the canvas rendering. Catch the canvas, baby. Day four, same deal. 20 knots out of the east. It's a wash machine offshore. And part of my three-tier approach on this particular trip was bottom fishing. And over there, it's kind of cool because you don't have to go far. It drops off super quick. I mean, you go from 20, 40, 100, and then boom, 500 feet. We watched the Simrad, and we we're just looking for really good pieces of bottom and structure. And once we found areas where you saw that you had bait, you could see some of the yellow tails there, we started our drift. And sure enough, it started happening. Boom, Carl's on. That was weird. It started coming up really fast. Went off. No, it's still there, I'm pretty sure. But I just think someone's chasing him or something. That's extremely weird. All right, Carl. Come on, Gump. You're almost there. Yeah! <laughs> That's what we came here for, boys. Then I start getting into the muttons. And I got a mutton. Ready. In addition to an impressive mutton snapper bite, we also caught strawberry groupers, an oversized Margate by Carl. No, that's nice. a Margate. Nice Margate. Look at a Margate. Whoa. Looks like a big shiner. Look at that guy. Schoolmaster snappers, the occasional cuda, yellowtails, and a feisty horse-eyed jack. With our day coming to a close, we racked the rods and returned to Blue Marlin Cove to enjoy our final evening. Our room, we had a large suite. We had a pool table, we had kitchens, and we decided to go ahead and have Joe Rieger and his family and his captain, Nate, Clay and Stephanie Cowart, Life by the Bow, join us for a, um, I guess for a lack of a better word, a fish fry uh, final party. We have some beers, we have a whole bunch of Papa Pilar's rum, and we have a pool table. So we're gonna have a pool challenge, dinner, drinks, and everybody's just gonna have a good time. As the evening progressed, Clay and I found ourselves in a heated game of eight ball. Even though interference from a spectator cost me the game, it was still an enjoyable time. Harry Vernon, paybacks are brutal. Anyway, I'll give it a clay. It was a fun game, e even though I lost. Well, unfortunately, today's the day we have to go home. But today, the weatherman actually got the weather report right. You know, the wind was maybe 10 mile an hour. It was at our stern, pushing us home the whole way. And uh, we cleared Blue Marlin Cove Marina. George was like, hey, you take the wheel, and I'm gonna go get rid of all these baits and start cleaning up the fish box. So I'm like, all right, so put that thing on autopilot, sat back, hit those throttles on those mercs, and we just cruised home. It was an easy ride home, made it home in like record time, and uh, had a blast. It was another sensational Bahama trip, a little bit challenging, but again, the point being, if you know the options and you have the tackle and you rig accordingly, 
despite what the weather might do to you or the particular fishery might do to you, there's generally enough in the Bahamas to make sure that you always, almost always come back with an excellent trip. And that's exactly what Carl Grassy and I did on our visit to Blue Marlin Cove at West End. If you want to keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you can see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.